A worldwide movement has emerged in recent years, bringing millions of people together to demand action on climate change. These demonstrations are remarkable not only for their sheer size, but also because of the number of young people in the crowds and organizing behind the scenes. Youth climate activists, some of whom are not yet old enough to vote, were fundamental in building what has become a major and growing social movement. My research asks, can this new generation of activists catalyze policy action to address climate change? The social movement literature suggests that protesting can be an effective strategy for achieving political goals, particularly for marginalized groups that may not have access to the resources needed to pursue action through more traditional avenues. Yet there is little scholarly information on the efficacy of youth activism. This is an important gap, in part because there are several reasons to think that youth climate activism is distinct from adult-led activism in ways that could influence the efficacy of protesting efforts. For example, youth are highly vulnerable to climate impacts because of their age. While some of the adverse effects of climate change are already happening, its most extreme challenges are expected to occur in the future. Arguably, young people face severe injustices because of climate inaction, which may make their appeals for efforts to address climate change more credible. Second, youth may adopt different messaging strategies than adults, including drawing on their personal fears and experiences to make appeals from an intergenerational justice perspective. This is in contrast to more traditional environmental messages that might focus on the effects of climate change for ecosystems or the general economy. I explore the interaction of these potential differences using a survey experiment. Participants were recruited using Amazon's Mechanical Turk and paid 65 cents for their time. Each participant was randomly assigned to read about a protest in which children, teenagers and young adults, or just generally adults were the focus. Each story also randomly varied whether the protesters used a traditional message or a youth-centered message. While it does not seem to matter if a young person is considered a child or a teenager, my results suggest that young people, generally speaking, can increase support for some policy preferences about climate change when they take the fit of their message and age into consideration. In fact, when activists do not take this kind of fit into account, it may actually reduce support for efforts to address climate change. For example, compared to a story with an adult protester using a traditional message, a young person using a traditional message, and an adult using a youth-centered message, both reduce support for a renewable energy policy. A youth protester using a youth-centered message, on the other hand, resulted in slightly higher support compared to an adult protester using a traditional message. Although there are a number of limitations to this study, it is my hope that it inspires additional research on youth climate activism so we can better understand this important topic.